Uh, you can answer. Maybe this could help, though. I heard this thing. Um, I did some research to identify other ways other people identify people to be part of a group for, for these non group techniques. That would be some kind of clarity. I mean, there are studies out there in terms of how they recruited people to participate in these. There's an article in um, 2008 by Castiglione that they recruited people by email in conference announcements. Another article in 2000 by Prince, they identified nine clients, clients were recruited from something called the Assertive Community Relations Program client roster. Um, another study sent out invitations to attend a seminar where the novel group technique would be conducted in the afternoon session. There's a 2009 article in the International Journal of Nursing Practices. One article said this, on block in 92, that they used their, how they identified their sample, they said on the practical criterion of availability, participants selected by the director and staff of the Iowa State Occupational Information Coordinating Committee. So you're right, I don't know exactly what was in that letter, but the procedure that we try to follow is procedure that other people have done in research. You know, body could be part of the But you're right, I don't know how, I don't know what's in the letter. Uh, I don't understand that. I mean, see, either you said they communicated to every single member by email. Right. So that's not the issue at all. Every member was solicited okay. if they read their email, right? Right. And is that the question? Is that the accepted, you know, professional way of doing it? I don't think, I don't think any of us up here are concerned about that issue. It's the okay. question of what was the invitation and how was it drafted? And I, that's right. Doctor, you indicated that the the results, or, or at least the survey questions that you reviewed, uh, tapped into the issues that came out of the focus groups. Is that correct? Yes. And the results of the survey, um, were you also privy to the results of the survey? The results were shared with me. They were shared with you, okay. So could you f safely say that the results of the survey uh, were consistent with some of the responses or at least the findings that you came out of the focus groups? I think in some of the areas there was some consistency in the concerns we identified in the focus groups and items that were brought up in this survey. Okay. In the focus groups themselves, the individuals who participated in the focus group, um, did you ask them whether they believed that this was a useful process? That's how we finalized the process. In, in, in your experience in these focus groups in general, um, is it the naysayers that show up to these focus groups? Is, is, um, and when you send out these types of surveys, uh, is it fair to say, or am, am I off base when I say only people that want to provide a negative response are going to respond to a survey? That's all I have. Cross-examination. <coughs> Good afternoon, doctor. Good afternoon. Just so I can understand um, your mission, you conducted the focus groups and, and analyzed the surveys in order to, what I will say, whittle down all of the different issues to create a finite list of bargaining proposals. Is that well, accurate? Well, to, to, to whittle those issues down to create a finite list of bargaining proposals. Bargaining proposals? Sure, that we have here today. I see that as bargaining proposals. That's what were the concerns of the spouses and officers that were at those focus groups. Okay. So it was, you took all the universe of issues that you surveyed and then whittled it down to a smaller... The universe of issues? It was specific issues. It was issues related to family issues, challenges of the job, stress Sure. I, I guess, let me clarify. When I say the universe of issues, the universe that were presented during the focus groups and in the survey, you took all the issues. I'm assuming, if I understand your, your testimony correctly, there are some issues that people talked about that didn't make it into your summary of report. No, I wouldn't say that. What was in the, what's in the questionnaire they used to initially write down their ideas, that's what we reported. Okay. So there were question things left out that we didn't include, and we're going to include that one set. Okay. We tried to make representation of the people who brought us that 
and, I, and I, I'm not trying to trick you at all. I'm just trying to understand what the process was. Yeah, I'm just trying to understand. So you took all this information and then you provided an, an analysis of the issues to whom? And after you provided that analysis of issues to the association, did you conduct any secondary analysis of your findings? No. Okay. And were you, were you asked to? No. Okay. Um, you mentioned that going back, you developed a, you developed a methodology <coughs> in order to conduct your focus groups and, and, your, and your survey. I used a focus group and I'm methodology. Okay. And is that methodology in enclosed in the materials that we have today? Yes, it is. Okay. It's, it's explained, I think, in pretty much detail. That's fine. I just, I didn't, I have not had a chance to look through. I just want to know if it was in today. Uh, and is this a, a generally accepted methodology, or is this a methodology that? Generally accepted. Oh, okay. There was a lot of commentary about COs and corrections officers. Mm -hmm. Did you also survey or Survey in the written survey, or speak to in in the in the uh, focus groups, any forensic security employees. I don't know what forensic security employees. Okay. Would that be social support staff? It's a group of employees within the association. I I, don't, I know there's a title called social um, support group, and I think like, they were invited to be part of this too. Okay. And I think one social support staff person showed up. And if the process by which you invite members to participate in the focus group is important, in fact, you mentioned that your credentials are at issue and you wouldn't participate if the process wasn't appropriate, why did you not participate in, in that part of the process? Why did I not participate in one part of the process? Why did you not review, for example, the inv invitation to participate in your focus groups? I don't know. Sure, but if I understood you correctly, you said that that is critically important because your credentials are on the line. Mm -hmm. okay. Well, they're on the line, but if you want to put that way, you can. We have, I think, what's been provided to us. What that is, what, it's titled a summary report of officers and spouses focus group. Is there a full report that you provided to the association? Okay, so summary is not, it just, it should really just say report yeah, of officers. Just, you know, the executive summary that's about four or five pages long. No, I have one that's, well. Yeah. And then the press report goes in detail about data and information, how the stuff and the process is done. I have, I'm and looking. And goodbye, January 2011. No, what tab would that, I have, just says, Pennsylvania State Corrections Officer Association Summary Report of Officers and Spouses Focus Group, January 2011. It is 25 pages long. Okay. Yes, that would be a pre and, and as was it the revised report that you were testifying from today? Okay. So let's go off the record a second. Could could let's go back on the record. Off the record, uh, the doctor uh, showed me a copy of his revised report, which is different than what we have in the booklet. Uh, the cover page in Exhibit 22, uh, where it says January 2011, yes. on the doctor's report, it says revised January 2011. So, hold on one second. Uh, so to the extent, well, Provide that revised report, and we'll substitute that in for Exhibit 22, and well, you can explain. And that's something I typically do. I do an initial report of what the material is, and then it's typically revised, you know, for typos, including references, clarifying information. So that's something I typically. Not a problem. Not a question. It's just we we want to yeah. have the same document that you're looking at. Right. So. Well, yeah. So by you know, as soon as we can do that, we'll just sub out the reports. All right. I do, I do have one question. Um, on this, when did you submit your initial report? The initial report, I think, was submitted early January 2011. Okay. And I submitted that saying, you know, folks, I wanted to let you know what's going on here. And I made people aware that there was another report that was going to come. 
Okay, and how long did it take to do the? I think the revised report came out the end of January 2011. Okay. So it was a matter of a couple of weeks there where I was going through doing typos. Where I think you cleaned it up, which, cleaned it which up. is fine. It, and it may not be significantly, significantly different or substantively different than what we have, but we should just have what you have. Yeah, yeah Brian. Good. And I just, just, to, just so, to clarify, it says summary report, but this is really the, the full report. And then the full report that I have January 2011 was revised. Right. I think it's okay. There. Yeah, that's what I didn't understand if there was like a 300 page report that. Perfect. I have no further questions. Thank you very much. Any questions from the panel? Yes. Um, thank you, Doctor, for your report. Um, My question is, is the report supposed to represent the opinion of the majority of the membership of the association? The report is supposed to represent the opinion of the people who are in those rooms and those focus groups in a period of time. Okay. Who are, in my opinion, as CEO, is trying to get more knowledge about the field and what they're experiencing. All right, so let's break down. There's a focus group report and there's a survey report. 57 people on the focus group and 4,000 or so responded to the survey. Okay. Um, did you draft the questions for the focus group? Yes, I did. The, if you could turn to, I think it's in tab one. I'm particularly interested in the questions about the best. Tab one? I mean, it's oh. table one. Table one. No, that's not it either. Where are the, where are the questions? Appendix A? There we go. Appendix A. Come on. Section C of the question. It's 22 in our tab section. And it wouldn't be for the spouses if you were the second one that had two W's for officers. Right. So it says correctional officer one questionnaire. Yeah. Now, in 8, 9, and 10 cover the vest, right? In section C. I'm lost now. Group three. Oh. Okay. Okay, section C. Yeah, eight, nine, and ten. Okay. My question is, why would you ask first um, question ten before you ask eight and nine? Yes. I would answer to that. There's no rhyme or reason in terms of that order. Well, do you think it would be more even if you said a question like, I could perform my job responsibilities uh, just as well or not as well, as opposed to having a leading question, is what I'm saying. But that's a double question you're asking. Not as well, just as well? Well, I, anything but a leading question is what I'm getting. Or, it, one of the questions I was going to ask you, or, you know, I'll, I'll characterize this as stated negatively. Yes. Could you have said, you know, or why wouldn't you say, I could perform my job responsibilities? Uh, no, scratch that question. Uh, the vest I'm required to wear is comfortable, or, you know, is, you know, is a pleasure to wear during, <laughs> during the shift. Yes or no? I'm being, I'm being a little extreme, but you know what I mean? Yeah, uh, that could have been another way to answer. Okay. And it, answer that question. And the question is, is, is there any thought process be, behind stating it in the way you did rather than in what I may characterize as you know, a more I mean, positive I, way? You know, I attempted to state the question in the way that it makes sense and people could understand what I was asking. That's the job. If someone can't understand, can't understand the question, then you answer it correctly. Well, but you make, you, when, when you say that's the job, I mean, who are you being paid by? I was paid by the association. Really. Okay. And these questions came from the association? Questions in this topic here, they wanted to tap that. Right. So to tap the concern about the vest, right. you ask questions that lead, lead to a, an answer. The vest I am required to wear causes a great discrete degree of comfort. It doesn't say causes some discrete degree of comfort, no degree of co discomfort. But I didn't answer those on a lack of scale. Okay. No, it, it made sense to what, ask in that way. You testified that certain questions were asked on the Liker scale? 